I'm making a game with a grappling hook, floating islands, and a main character who has the power to control time. Welcome to my first devlog. Right now I'm envisioning a cross between Breath of the Wild and Braid. Players will explore an archipelago of floating islands in a vast open world in order to discover ancient treasures and engage in epic battles. The player will be able to manipulate time in various ways, such as reversing time, slowing time down, pausing time, etc. Some of the enemies will also have time powers, so the player has to be careful. The game will have online multiplayer, because reasonable scope is for fools who only care about things like shipping a game or preserving their sanity. If you don't have any friends to play with, you can play with the past versions of yourself by traveling back in time. The first thing I want to make is a basic character controller. I thought about spending hours making my own custom controller over the course of 8.5 action-packed devlogs of capsules running around on cubes, but ultimately decided against it. I'll be using assets from the Unity store as much as possible to speed up development time. So after combining the kinematic character controller, Sinti Dungeon Realms, and Everyday Motion Animation Packs together, I now have a basic character that can move around and jump. I'll call him Bob for now. Now that that is taken care of, I can finally get to the fun stuff, time travel. The first time mechanic I will be making is rewind. While the player holds the rewind button down, time will move in the opposite direction. The way I will be achieving this is similar to the way a video recorder works. A camera records video by capturing a series of pictures and then playing them back in sequence. A video can be played in reverse by showing the images in reverse order. In a similar fashion, by recording game data every frame, this data can then be played back in reverse to simulate the effect of time being reversed. It's a simple idea but complex in execution. I'll start with recording physics objects. This means keeping track of an object's position, rotation, scale, velocity, and angular velocity. I've already coded the initial system, so I'll be testing it with some falling anvils. And as I expected, it doesn't work at all! Maybe it would help if I set the anvil's rotation to its past rotation instead of its current one. Alright, now it looks like it's working, until the anvils get to their starting position and... yeah. After another change, now I have a reverse time loop. Cool, but not really what I was going for. A few more minutes of fiddling around later, and it finally seems stable. So I celebrate by repeatedly bashing Bob's head in with an anvil so I'm not the only one with a headache. Now that I have Rewind working for basic rigid bodies, I need to add another recorder that keeps track of animation data. I also want to add variable rewind speed. Right now you can only rewind time at the same speed as it was going forward, but it'd be nice if time could be reversed at half or double speed. This can be done by blending between records. For example, to blend between position data, between every position record I can insert a position that is halfway between the other two. This lets me keep the same frame rate when reversing at slower speeds without making the playback look jerky. After adding this feature I initially forgot to apply the speed modifier to the animation, which led to Bob either looking like he's moonwalking or wearing some 7 league boots depending on whether time is being reversed slowly or rapidly. But I fixed that, and soon enough, he was reversing through time like a pro. Now that I've mastered the time-space continuum, it's time to do something even harder. Online multiplayer. Online multiplayer is something that adds a ton of complexity when making any game. It only gets harder to add the further along the game is in development, so I wanted to get an early start on it. I don't have a lot of footage from this, because the development process is pretty boring. The main challenge of multiplayer is to keep things in sync across different instances of the game. The video playing now shows an example of this. When an animation plays on one instance of the game, it doesn't play on the other. Eventually I got this and other desync issues fixed, and the little functionality that currently exists in the game works perfectly in multiplayer with no bugs at all. At this point I wanted to try adding an enemy to the game. I wanted to see how this floating eyeball looked moving around, so I started to add it to my player prefab when I made a glorious discovery.
Well, that's an hour of my life I'm not getting back. At least it wasn't a complete waste of time. When running around in Bob's new skin, I noticed a bug when rewinding in slow motion. When rewinding at normal speed, everything looks normal, but I noticed at half speed there was some stuttering going on. To get a better idea of what was happening, I made the rewind speed 1% of the normal flow of time. It became obvious that instead of smoothly blending between frames, like the code was supposed to do, it just delayed the amount of time between replaying frames and didn't insert new ones. I eventually tracked the problem down to the class responsible for recording the inputs of the player and sending it to the character controller. This was fairly easy to fix once I figured out what was going on, so reversing in slow motion is once again working beautifully. Even with his new look, running and jumping alone won't be enough for Bob to traverse a bunch of floating islands unless they are really close to each other, so now it's time to give him a grappling hook. I'll start with getting the movement working, and then I'll make the visuals to match it. Due to my leap programming skills, within 5 minutes the grappling hook movement is working flawlessly with no bugs at all. Flawlessly with no bugs at all. It's a lot of fun to swing between these white spheres, but it's kind of hard to tell what points I can grapple to. To fix this, I added colored targets to the grappling points. Red means that the target is in range distance-wise, but the player either isn't facing it or it's further away than another valid grapple point. If the target is green, that means it will be the target you grapple to when you hit the grapple button. When you start grappling to a target, the color will change to blue. This improves the user experience a lot. Before I did this, I found myself grappling to the wrong point a lot of the time. The next thing to add is a grapple animation for Bob. Unfortunately, the animation pack I'm using doesn't have an animation for a grappling hook. So it looks like I'll have to use my professional 3D animation skills to download the closest matching animation from Mixamo. The animation still isn't exactly what I want, so I'll have to edit it a bit. In this clip, you can see me cutting two poses out of the animation, one where the character is leaning forward and another where the character is leaning backward. I can blend between the two based on the dot product between the player transform's forward vector and their velocity vector, which makes it seem like Bob is swinging back and forth. The effect is subtle and could definitely be improved, but I'm happy with this result for now. Next up, Bob needs something to hang on to. I've decided to go with a chain. To create the chain, I just have to spawn a bunch of links and align that point from Bob to the grapple point. On my first test, it looked like it was working pretty well. That is, until I tried grappling a second point, and then a third point, and then a 23rd point. But after a quick fix to the code responsible for hiding and showing the chain links, the spawning along a straight line seems to be working pretty well, so it's time to add some rotation to the chain links. My first attempt works flawlessly. Unless for some reason you want to go above the grapple point, which makes the chain links want to throw a dance party. After some more code changes and shrinking the chain a bit, I'm almost done. The only thing left to do is to make Bob rotate along with the chain, as right now it looks a little weird, especially when you're above the grapple point. Until now, all the grapple chain visuals have only taken a few hours, so I figured I only had an hour or so left to go. <laughs> Turned out to be more like 10. This was because the character controller I'm using is already setting Bob's rotation every frame based on the direction of the player's input. When also taking into account the rotation of the chain, Everything works fine as long as Bob is below the grapple point, but as soon as he gets above he spazzes out. After hours of grueling debugging that left both me and Bob banging our heads against the ground, I finally fixed this issue only to uncover another issue with the way the grapple mechanics work. Right now the chain has a preferred length, and if the player grapples the target from further away than that preferred length, the player gets pulled directly toward the grapple point. This works great in most cases, but when the player is low velocity, they get pulled right into the grapple point and then bounce away, losing all momentum. This feels bad when it happens, and I'm still not 100% sure what the correct way to deal with it is. It's hard to evaluate in this test level alone, so in the next devlog I will be making some procedurally generated floating islands for Bob to grapple between.